Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. It is 8.33. I am Chair of Education and I am calling this uh, committee to order. Uh, members, would you please all log into your Zoom so that the students that are going to be joining us today from afar will be able to see you as well as, um, as the, the public. Um, as we participate in our now annual student day. I'd like to welcome all of the students that are joining us here in person and all of the students that are joining us uh, via Zoom. We appreciate all of you taking the time to not only come to the Capitol, join us on Zoom, but to perhaps think about um, your student experience What's going well? What are some of the struggles? What's a message you might want to send to your legislator? Um, we are so um, very, very fortunate to have over 40 students who signed up to do this and to join us. And so while we originally thought we might have a lot of time per student, as the list grew, we realized that we would have to trim your comments down to about two minutes. And I, I really apologize for that. But we do want to hear the voices. We do want to see the faces. And uh, remember that, uh, that a lot of the work that we do comes from our students comes from your messages, your stories, and uh, that's how we, or at least we use those to incorporate into the work that we do here at the legislature to ensure that our students are getting the best education that Minnesotans can afford. And so with that, we are going to begin with um, three very, um, 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 neat students here today. Uh, I would like to ask Maud um, Abdi, an elementary student, Zach White, and um, Elkai Watt to join us up at the front uh, at the tables. They are joining us from the St. Paul um, Metro Deaf School and they would like to share with us. So if you would come up to the desk And when you begin, if you would state your name for the record, and then I think there's a clipboard if who's ever not speaking would sign in on the clipboard. And you may begin. Hi, welcome. My name is A. Clue. My last name is Wa. My sign name is A. Clue. I'm a junior student at Metro Deaf School. He said, hello, my name is Zach White, and I'm a seventh grader at Metro Deaf School. And hi, my name is Moad. My sign name is Moad. I'm in fifth grade at Metro Deaf School. I wanted to take a moment to talk about why I support Metro Deaf School as much as possible with the strong education. I look at the students in high school and see how they're achieving different courses they're taking, like on tests, like NWA or the state required test. I see all of us improving, and we have the support from the staff. I mean, not just small improvements, but also often large improvements are happening. And the potential there is huge. So I see them helping every student available and seeing the, each of the classes that are offered becoming more and more successful for the future. And it, we can see us going to college and we see others, you know, we're pulling up our grades. So I just thank you for your time. And the reasons I love MDS, the school has many different opportunities, like deaf events, where we meet other deaf students. 
and we get to join various activities. We do fundraising. We've been fundraising for a gym currently. And many of the teachers there really care. And I see my reading level really improving. And so as we see people move on into like high school or whatnot, they're being successful as well. And we learn all kinds of things about social issues. And I love MDS, what I like about school is I get to join different groups. I love my teachers, they help me improve. And just the people there and how they instruct. And yeah, the learning. He says, the classes I like are PE, STEM with robotics. And I love, we do swimming once a month. We have a swim team, so I get more talented in that. Well, thank you all three of you for coming in this morning and sharing with us. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed our visit to your school a couple weeks ago. Our, our committee came. Uh, thank you, Senator Rarick, for joining us that day. And uh, we're so impressed, not just by the students, but the environment and your, your teachers as well. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. And please don't hesitate to let us know how we can support your school in the best way. All right, uh, next, if we, I'm going to call up three students at a time. When you come up, would you please sign in um, and then uh, always state your name and your school for the record and we'll begin that way. So let's start with Teddy um, Theraldson, Jude Anderson, and um, uh, Amaran Chamberlain. And you can begin. Hello, I am Teddy Tharlson. I'm an eighth grader at St. Anthony Middle School. This year my grade went on a school field trip to Eagle Bluff Environmental Learning Center. We also have a student council at our school. I ran and was elected treasurer. I know that you have been working really hard to make changes in schools, but I have not noticed many changes in schools yet. My dad is a school psychologist, and he still spends almost every afternoon, weekend, and holiday writing reports. This bugs me because then he can't spend time with me and my brother. I know his union might go on strike again, which would be bad for his students and for us because he won't get paid. Also, my mom tells me about teachers all across the state who are picketing and fighting for basic raises and improvements to their schools. I know you put a lot of money towards education, but the teachers aren't getting them that money currently. Teachers work hard and they should get paid well for the work they do. I think teachers should get a yearly raise without having to fight for it. Something I think you should know as legislators is that all schools should be welcoming for all students of all cultures and backgrounds and how they express themselves. I read an article about a teacher in Worthington, Minnesota. He was forced to remove his pride flag and the flag of his home country of Puerto Rico from his classroom. I think that this was a big mistake by the school board because it meant school is meant to be a place where you experience differences and similarities from your own life. I'm asking that as long as a flag is meant to make the flag is meant to make school a more welcoming community. Teachers may hang the flags they wish. Cultural and GSA clubs should also be allowed to be created when students want them. I feel sorry for the students of Worthington High School for losing such a great teacher who cared a lot about making school a welcoming place. Thank you for having me here today and listening to my ideas. Thank you so much, Teddy, and, and we heard your message loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, next, Jude. Good morning, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Jude Anderson, and I am a sixth grade student at St. Anthony Middle School, also known as the acronym SAMS. I will be using this acronym because it's way shorter than St. Anthony Middle School. My pronouns are they, them. This school year is going well. This is my first year in middle school. My favorite classes are theater, social studies, and band. I really like how SAMS is able to offer arts and music classes. I am also in the middle school play for The Wizard of Oz. It opens this Friday. You are invited to come to see me. My favorite thing at SAMS is a GSA club, which stands for Gender Sexuality Alliance Club. 
My social study teacher runs this, and she is the best. This club makes me feel confident and cozy, and just where I need to be. I am glad that Sam's is able to allow this club, because I moved from Arizona last year, and there was no GSA club there. It makes me feel safe and supported. One interesting thing about me is that I am a leukemia survivor, and I am deaf in my left ear. Because of this, I have an IEP and work with a special educator. I feel like the principal and all the teachers at Sam's knows me as a person and, I, and are really supportive. The principal is also a cancer survivor, and this is really positive and kind. To wrap things up, I want to thank you for having me here. It is such an honor to speak at the State Senate. Thank you so much, Jude. I appreciate you coming in this morning. Um, Amarin, you are next. Um, hello, my name is Amarin Chamberlain. I'm a member of Venture Academy and also a member of the Little Earth Boys and Girls Club. Um, for me, school is, um, my bad, for me, It's okay. The school is, um, my school is like very like small and um, they're very like, make sure like, like they help everyone. So they make sure everyone is successful. So like, yeah. Any suggestions you can give us for legislature? I know that, don't my be bad, nervous. We're all just moms and dads and. Uh, I, I just, Wish um, we went on like more like field trips, like about like learn more stuff. Damn. We heard we heard last year a lot about how field trips are important to students. Yeah, like after like after like COVID, like before COVID we went on like a decent amount, but like after COVID, like we don't really go on like anymore like field trips, and then like less activities. So like, wish there was like more activities during school, stuff like that. Well, thank you so much. Anything else? No. Okay. Well, thanks uh, to you three students. And we really appreciate you being here. I know it's not always easy to come in front of adults, but um, know that we do want to hear and listen uh, to each and every single one of you. All right. Uh, next, we have EJ Keynes, Christian Kar Karakash, and Addison Anderson. Are you EJ? Yes. Okay. Why don't you go ahead? And it looks like our other two students might be online. So you, why don't you start and we'll get them all queued up. Okay. Hi, my name is EJ Keynes, but I, well, I go by EJ because people never got my name right. So it stands for Errol John Lee Keynes is my full name. And I took the E from my first name and the J from John and combined it so then it's my to some of my initials okay today i'm here to speak about how i feel about learning in about minnesota's history i would like to know more about like protesting and stuff like that at a younger age i didn't know much about it until like six and fifth and i'm in sixth grade and i go to sam's sorry i forgot that um, so I'd like to learn more about that at a younger age, like about, we do learn a lot about Martin Luther King Jr., but there's always more to learn about it. So I'd like to learn more about it. And I have dyslexia and uh, I would always, when I was younger, I used to feel different in a bad way. So I'd also like if, it, if for people who have an IEP when they're younger to be able to feel safer. I, when I was younger, it's very sad that I was different in other ways like that. Thank you for bringing me out. Uh, thank you for having me speak. 
Well, I'm glad you were able to come here, EJ, and, and share your thoughts and your feelings about what's important to you as a, as a student in your community. So thank you very, very much. And now I think we're going to switch over to um, Zoom. And um, would you please state your name when you, when you um, come on, and then you can share whatever you've got to share with us. Just one minute. We're OK, try now. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. My name is Christian Pirakash. I'm a senior over at Hibbing High School. And I'm also a student representative to our ISD 701 school board. So I wanted to just introduce a few things from our school this year and how the year is going. Uh, I'm very happy with how the school administration is working, and especially going into my senior year and experiencing it thus far. It, uh, it, it has been significantly better than some of the previous years from earlier years in high school. And just seeing the strides that the administration has made is pretty, pretty amazing. So in terms of changes that our school may be uh, going into, I know we've been discussing, especially with the board, a grade shift from our seventh grade moving from our high school to our middle school, which would be a pretty big operation to go through. But there's careful planning involved to make sure everything goes smoothly with staff and students. And we believe this is actually very beneficial just because of the uh, maturity differences in seventh graders and the size of the high school, being able to integrate them better. Additionally, we're taking advantage of a state law that was passed for online curriculum and being able to offer online schooling um, for kids who choose to homeschool but can remain within our district and retain those numbers of students. In terms of things to tell you guys as a committee, uh, I believe our district has done a very well, uh, very exceptional job in providing academic benefits and social benefits to the school. For state education, I think my only concern would be uh, the fund that we have available to us and the fund um, which we have to draw from for state mandates because we have to use our general fund for things such as transportation, whereas it would be more beneficial if we had additional funds to use on that from the state and then we have more money to retain for other things throughout our school. And that's pretty much my only main concern, but that's about everything, so thank you. Thank you, Christian. And then we have Addison. Hello, um, my name is Addison Anderson. I'm from the Hibbing High School. I'm a senior, and I'm also a student representative for the school board. Um, this, this school year has been going really well. I feel like I'm more involved, and the changes, I feel like the, the staff and more students are involved in PSEO or um, some of our um, classes that we offer, like we have an Ojibwe class um, and we have a lot of facts classes where you can sew, cook, quilt. They also added a peer mentoring class, which I was a part of and it was a very good experience and it was very fun. For what? Yeah, it was very fun and it was really, um, I can't think it's of the word. Prep. Yeah, it's a teacher prep class. Um, we have a really well, we have a really good industrial um, class. We have um, shop, welding, building construction where they go and build a house from the ground up every year. Um, we also have a GSA club, and I think it's pretty cool to do that. Um, I don't really have many concerns. Um, so we do offer um, SITS classes because we lose 90 or more students to PSEO, which is post-secondary at the college. Um, so we offer 24 SITS classes, including band and choir but I don't really have any concerns. So thank you for having me. 
Thank you, um, both of you, um, Addison and Christian, for coming from Hibbing. Uh, we were really fortunate to get up there this summer as well and visit your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful high school. Um, thank you, Senator Farnsworth, for joining us there that day. And uh, it sounds like they have a pretty robust uh, opportunities for you. I especially like that teacher prep uh, class that you have as I was a teacher for 25 years. So excellent there. Thank you so much. And again, if there's anything that you think of later on, if you want to share that with us, please do. Next, I will call up Ella Olson, Chelsea Neba, and Michael Rup Rupenstein um, to, to speak. And then after they're done, we will have Gabriel Vincent, Brand Bueno Fajardo, and Karina Kaplan. So if you want to kind of get yourselves ready. And remember to state your name, and you may begin. Hello, my name is Ella Olson, and I am a senior at S STMA High School. As I prepare to graduate in May, I am very aware that across the state of Minnesota, not every high school student will have had the same educational opportunities due to inadequate and unequal funding. My school district is heavily impacted by this. Without the funding to provide enough teachers to keep lower class sizes, provide more AP classes, and expand foreign language opportunities, St. Michael Albertville students cannot have as much individualized student attention, we can't save as much money in college as some of our peers at other districts, and we might be limited in our understandings or knowledge of other cultures. Now, some of you may have heard me or my district share this message before. You may say or think that we sound like a broken record. But a broken record doesn't sound that way if it's not broken. Things need to be fixed. I'm here before you today to say that every year feels the same, regardless of what minor bills may be thrown at the situation. We still have to make budget cuts. Teachers still feel the urge to leave our school district in mass exoduses because they get paid more at other school districts that have more funding. My school district is poverty poor, which means that we have a heavy burden on the taxpayers, meaning that our taxpayers don't want to pay for another levy to keep supporting our schools. Where we live determines our educational opportunities throughout our lives, and students are currently being essentially punished for where our parents choose to live. We are students. We do not get to pick where we live, where we attend to school, and we don't get to pick the legislators that are in charge of properly funding our schools to give us the best opportunities. Students across the state of Minnesota deserve better. We are the future, and we are worth the investment. Thank you. Thanks much. Um, let's see, next is Chelsea. Good morning, my name is Chelsea Neva and I'm currently a senior at SDMA High School and this school year has been filled with ups and downs. I'm at the age where life starts to feel real and things aren't just handed to me. My parents' money is slowly actually becoming their money and not mine. <laughs> this school year, um, I've seen a big shift to putting the kids and their interests first. I'm in the concert choir and we recently had a tour in Omaha, Nebraska. Our choir is about 80 kids total and our teachers were able to handle the chaos going on with other activities going on at the same time as ours. The 1X students, about 11-ish of them in the choir, had their state performance and the same day as our ACDA performance. And in order to make both happen, our activities director, Mr. Cornell, and our boosters flew the 1X students back home the same day to their performance. Other schools would have probably just told them that perform without them or told the kids to pick an activity, but at STMA, the staff and teachers place the students' interests first. And I find that to be the reason why we do so well in tough circumstances such as low funding. STMA being 322 out of 328 on the funding list puts an economic pressure and emotional pressure on the students and staff. The ratio of one teacher to 30 students in each class creates a wall between the students and teachers and it builds a relationship wall. A teacher can be a student's guiding light in a world full of darkness, but because of low funding, it makes it difficult for teachers to be that light. Relationships are one of the most important factors in a child's education. It can make a break or break a child's view on school. An increase in equitable funding would allow for students to build stronger relationships with our teachers and allow us to have wider opportunities. I would like to thank our legislators for listening to our voices and incorporating our stories and opinions into the educational finances. 
At the last legislative session, you all gave very important points on the steps it takes to reach equitable funding. We understand that because of where we live and the, our chances are of increased funding are lower, but our slogan is excellence is our tradition. And we do our best to keep that tradition alive. The new bill 3885, if passed, would lessen the funding gap, decrease class sizes, and open opportunities for students. We acknowledge the efforts to change the system, and we hope it will not stop here. And you'll continue to use your position to improve the quality of education for all students. Thank At you, STMA, Chelsea. We have to move on now. Okay, and sorry. so thank you so Sorry much for your, um, your words. And we've heard you loud and clear. I'm yeah. sure your community has heard it loud and clear as well. And congratulations. And what a wonderful task that your um, boosters and the, the um, folks flew that, that student back and forth. That was really important. And it, it, it's a, a sign how dedicated they are to your students. So thank you so much. Um, we'll go on to, uh, let's see, Michael. Uh, <clears throat> Good morning and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Michael Rupensing. I'm a senior at Spring Lake Park High School. What I'd actually like to share with you today is uh, my story and how school has helped me shape my, uh, my path right now uh, through learning experiences that I was able to choose. Uh, so growing up, I always had the intention of pursuing a career in business and finance, um, but I was unsure how to achieve it and how to get there. Um, I started reselling sneakers and learning stock trading in the eighth grade, and then in high school I proceeded to start a car detailing business. Finding small success in these things, uh, I didn't see the purpose in pursuing a college education, although that has changed now. Um, through my passion for real estate and business, I made the choice to sign up for a uh, marketing and entrepreneurship course, Double Block, which is a double block year long course within the business and entrepreneurship pathway, which is one of the three pathways offered at my high school. This class is a business elective and a language arts credit combined with a college credit option. Throughout classroom experiences, such as pitching an idea for, uh, for a product Shark Tank style and through working on a project with local business to solve a real world, world problem, I was able to learn great communication skills, which has proven to be a major help in my current plans. This year, I made the choice to partake in a co-created humanity course, which provides a way to design your own learning for credit working with a teacher. Through this, I was able to test out multiple business models, such as sales, door-to-door uh, -door sales, cold calling sales, and different aspects of business. Um, the best thing I learned from all of these experiences is that I can shape my own future. I don't need someone to tell me what to pursue in order to learn and succeed. The message I wish to leave with legislators today is to not think of a learning experience based on only physical results you see. A lot of people see the test scores, but they don't see the learning. If we all waited for the perfect test score, there would be no room for improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I'm really glad to hear that your school is providing those opportunities for you to expand your own personal um, goals and interests. Um, really, really proud that your Spring Lake Park is in my district, and I know they're doing really good work. So thank you, all three of you, and appreciate you coming down here. Next, we'll have um, Gabriel. Vincent Brandt Bueno Fajardo and Karina Kaplan. And then on deck will be um, Christian Barrera Correra, Molly Ginther, and Anna um, Abdelali. Uh, state your name for the record and you may begin. All right. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Vincent and I'm a senior at Spring Lake Park High School. I come from a family with very high expectations. Both my parents are Liberian, and they came to America to build a better future for themselves. Because of their experience, they had, they had their own idea of the best future for me. Their idea was nursing. My mom always wanted to be a nurse, and that's what she wanted for me too. That's what I thought I wanted too. Last year, I was able to take the nursing assistant class at my school. The class is a part of our Health and Human Resources pathway one of the three career pathways at Spring Lake Park High School. I took the class and realized I couldn't do it. Nursing wasn't for me. If I didn't have the chance to take that course, I would probably be going into nursing school next year. I had a new plan. I always loved going to the dentist and I figured I wanted to be a dental hygienist. Next year, I'm hoping to be able to have an internship at Apple Dental. School hasn't always been something that came easily for me. All my life, I felt like I had to work twice as hard to understand learning. Sometimes classes move too fast, 
you're expected just to keep up and figure it out. Personally, I need teachers to go in a lot of details. I have to make sure I understand every part before I move on. I raised concerns to my counselor and she was able to help me get into an alternative learning team at Spring Lake Park High School. The alternative learning team has teachers who work, who work with each student to make a personalized plan. With the all team, there is flexibility to do your work at your own pace and get, and get the goal. The flexible, the flexible way of learning have helped me find my path. We can't all be forced in, we, can, we can't always be forced in learning the same way. Sometimes the way you're set to learn it, set to learn, I'm supposed to learn at a certain pace. That's not, that's not me. I don't learn like that. Because of my experiences, I've learned how I learn and I'm on track to graduate and attend Normandale for their dental hygienist program. My request today is that you please support programs that personalize learning and support opportunities for students to explore a career and find it's not for them. Finally, please support flexible learning, flexibility to experience a potential career through learning experiences like internships. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. And again, very glad that you have um, that opportunity for flexibility and, and to pursue the interests that you are most interested in. So thanks. Uh, I'm not seeing Gabriel. Uh, no, excuse me. Um, oh, Brant and Karina. Columbia Heights students, anyone of you here yet? Nope. Okay, we'll swing back to, to them. How about Molly Ginther, Hannah Abdahali, and uh, Nick Hassel? If you are here, you can come up to the booth. And then um, in, in the um, coming up after them will be Irondale students. Are you here? Nope, not seeing that. How about uh, Sunrise Park Middle School? Are you here? Okay. So why don't you, after these three, why don't you um, get yourselves ready to come up to the microphone? And then we'll keep going. All right. So we have here Molly, if you would like to state your full name for the record, and um, you may begin. Thanks. Hi. Hi, my name is Molly Ginther, and I'm a senior at Wyzetta High School. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to testify to you guys about my Could you speak experience. up just a little bit, or at least get closer to the <laughs> microphone? Thank you. Perfect. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to testify on my personal and observed school experience. So, so far this school year, um, my position, uh, in my position as student body president, I have had the unique opportunity to directly connect with students and administration on topics and issues surrounding our school. Hearing their concerns and feedback has allowed me to create more inclusivity and connections within our school environment and bridge the gap between students and staff, which allows me to have a better understanding of our school community functions. Today, I would like to take the opportunity to speak to you about our educational resources and funding. Minnesota prides itself on having a strong educational system, ensuring that there is balanced educational resources. Unfortunately, there is a big discrepancy within this. There is funding and it is unbalanced between our school districts, especially within rural and suburban areas compared to urban areas as well. All students should have the equal opportunity to succeed and grow in their future for their endeavors and their careers that they are interested in. Educational resources, educational resources are not always balanced, especially when it comes to districts with lower socioeconomic classes, where many suburban schools fry thrive, many rural and urban schools face disadvantages with lack of resources and proper funding that is unbalanced. While well, I'm fortunate enough to attend a suburban school that provides stellar resources and support for students, including many programs, AP classes, and CTE programs, I know my experience is not the same for many other students in the state of Minnesota, and they are in, need of des they're in desperate need of more resources and funding. My school community is determined to aid students by providing low or free co low cost or free resources such as large a large academic mentor program, test preparation courses, and a large college and career planning service. 
There are local, these are local examples of local solutions that are helping gap, wage the gap between my community, but these are also examples of how we can better um, support students in other schools. No student should ever be disadvantaged simply because their school is unable to offer the necessary resources and opportunities to help them succeed. We must continue to work to have equal opportunity in education, and that starts with balancing funding and expanding resources across the state. I don't have all the answers to the possible solutions, but I would like to be a part of the solution and create change. Education is key to our students' success in our state's future, so it is, collect it is our collective responsibility to ensure that we are doing the right things to educate our students, and I look forward to any and all conversations about this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much for your message and for your willingness or your interest in being part of the, the solution as well. So thanks very much. So um, Hannah, would you like to begin? Yeah. Um, Good morning, Madam Chair and members of committee. My name is Hannah Abdullahi, and I'm currently a senior at Forest Lake Area High School. I live in Circle Pines, Blaine. My school year has been filled with good challenges and new experiences. I would like the legislators to know that my school has many hands-on experience and college um, credit opportunities for, for students. Because of several members of my family's work in the healthcare industry, I've always known that I wanted to also work in the healthcare field. In my family, I am known as the caregiver as I treat injury, um, injuries hands-on. My school experience started with me registering for freshman year during COVID learning. I wanted to take classes that would, um, that would allow me to be outside and more hands-on rather than sitting at home in front of a computer screen all day. That's why I decided to take greenhouse technology because it fit into that, it fit into that description. Through that, um, through that I learned because of that class, I learned about concurrent enrollment and career pathway guides, which is something that my school offers. It's basically, um, it's basically courses and many certification-based opportunities for students to work in the um, area field of their of their interest. Um, my sophomore year, I knew that I wanted to challenge myself, so that's when I started taking more AP classes. I started getting, um, I started becoming more involved with the school. I took a lot of healthcare-based um, field trips that my school provided, and I continued to do that all throughout my sophomore and junior year. Um, I am now able to be in a position of privilege thanks to the opportunity that my school has provided for me and because of that my journey started knowing that I wanted to do something in the healthcare field and I am now part of that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, again, I, I'm always heartened when we hear of the school districts that are, are able to support your individual interests and the, the things that you want to do in the future. Thanks much. All right, uh, Nick? Hello, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Nicholas Hosel. I'm a senior in Forest Lake High School, and I live in Forest Lake. When I started high school as a freshman, I loved working with my hands and building things. With this, I took classes that supported those interests. I took Intro to CAD and Metals and Woods. These classes helped confirm my interests in a direction that would help with engineering. My next year in high school, I continued to pursue these interests with next level courses such as Engineering One, which was concurrently offered through Pine Tech and which I earned college credit in, as well as Metals and Power Mechanics, which helped the mechanical side of my interests. That same year, I participated in a career field trip to advance molding technologies through our high school. This helped confirm my interest in engineering and is something that I look back on positively. My junior year, I continued my courses in the Engineering techne Technology Pathways, which is something our school offers, as well as AP courses that helped strengthen my math and science side. I took an Engineering 2 course, which I used reverse engineering to engineer UTV and solved problems that, I occurred, that occurred in the design process. Between hearing from engineering speakers and attending college and career fairs, this focused my interest onto mechanical engineering and colleges that could support that goal, such as UMD and NDSU that I met with at these college fairs. My senior year, in addition to these pathways, I added a class that we call at the high school Career Launch, Explore, and Experience. In this, I earned my OSHA 10 certification 
and job shadowed at Boston Scientific, which was very hands-on and helped with a plastic injection experience, which led into my internship at Team Vantage, which was a paid internship, which works with a lot of plastic injection technologies. I was able to work with some of the technicians there, and that has connected the production side to the engineering side, in my mind, more. I continue to work and intern there to, to this day. Next year, I plan to go to UW Stout for mechanical engineering, which is a polytechnic institute, which means it has a lot of hands-on experiences that really matches my high school experience, and I think will really allow me to grow and continue to learn how I like to learn. My journey started that I, knowing that I wanted to build and create things, and I'm very happy for the classes and experience that, is, that have supported this chance. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, and I'm just really thrilled for the experience and the plans that you have for the future, so best wishes. Uh, next, we will ask uh, Neola Luswada, Cassandra Calvin, and uh, is Frankie Rhodes here? After these three, we'll have uh, Reagan Yassin, Rama Muhammad, and Aubrey Eichart uh, join us. As soon as you're ready, state your name for the record and you may begin. Good morning, my name is Neil Luswana and I'm an eighth grader at Sunrise Park Middle School. My school year this year is going well academically. I've improved in a lot of my weaker areas and I've started better reading habits. I've also continued to strive in my stronger areas, which are math and science, where I found that STEM is something I'm interested in. But socially, this school year has been quite the challenge for me, having to deal with middle school drama and making friends. <laughs> a big change I've noticed at my school this year is our grading system. We previously used a traditional grading system, which typically uses letter grades and percentages, now to a standards-based grading system, which uses numbers four, three, two, one, four being the highest and one being the lowest, while measuring by level of mastery. Although we've stuck with using letter grades where A means exceeds, B meets, C approaching, D does not meet, and I is incomplete. As for me and many of my peers, this change was, hard, was a hard adjustment as we've been used to traditional grading system. In my opinion, I believe that standards-based grading isn't a very accurate and consistent skill to use for grading. As for some subjects, you can only meet the standards of the assignment, therefore students are unable to receive a grade higher than a B. Also, excess and successfully completes can be defined differently by different teachers. As a result, students' grades can vary based on their teacher. What's important for me in education is learning not just academics, but also being provided the opportunity to grow, excel, and improve in numerous ways. Building different skills like time management, discipline, commitment, consistency, social skills, teamwork, and many more. A way students would have the opportunity to grow in these areas is by giving them the chance to study, get extra help, or complete missing work at school during the school day. Anywhere from around 30 minutes to an hour, students would get, the, get to choose how they like to spend this time. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you so much, and I, I must say for an eighth grader, you are very well spoken and prepared, so I appreciate you. that. Uh, Cassandra, are you Cassandra? No? Well, go ahead and state your name and, and oh, are you Cassandra? Come on up. <laughs> All right, in the meantime, why don't you go ahead and we'll give Cassandra a minute to okay. sit down and um, get herself ready to go. Okay. You can Hi. take a seat. Hi, I'm Frankie Rhodes from St. Anthony Middle School, and as most of my family and friends know, I'm not one to follow the rules of a normal 14-year-old. So here I am today, sitting somewhere I never could have imagined I would be, so incredibly thankful for this opportunity. I am one who values the safety and belonging with others with the true intent to make change happen. I will say that the school year is going good, Besides facing my own challenges among many of my peers, I can confirm that each day I walk into school not suspecting any major confrontation with violence. But the truth is, in 2020, the Minnesota Department of Safety stated 1,700 guns were stolen. There were 513 firearm-related deaths in 2020. Of these deaths, 354 were suicides and 138 were homicides. I would like to ask, what are we doing to prevent these stolen guns from entering, entering the presence of children attending schools? What are we doing to prevent guns from entering the hands of children or their loved ones? 
What are we doing to teach to kids the reality of what's becoming the new, new normal? That's it, the new normal. The common knowledge that each day in America, you can lose your life to a gun while walking down the street. Why are we informing children of guns when we could be severely limiting the access to guns, making it highly unlikely for children to ever grow up and see a gun? Why are we adapting to losing lives instead of making change? I go to a school that's considered safe by my peers, but we still fear violence of all types. Just because I don't live in an area of poverty doesn't mean we do not see or experience violence. While being the smallest independent school district in Minnesota, we are no different in need of change and protection. Even though we have our resources, we are still not safe from the violence that cannot be immediately changed by one voice. That's why I'm here, to demand change. Some changes that I have noticed is the fact that we haven't had many lockdown drills this year. I can say from personal experience that they are stressful and distracting. My peers and I don't have the proper background knowledge we need about violence. I propose that schools in Minnesota provide informational programs that inform students of the reasons behind lockdowns in a healthy manner for grades three through five. Some may say this is too soon, but the challenges of the outside world need to be taught early so that kids are properly prepared for this world. I wish I didn't have to be sitting here today saying things that have been said before in order for action to be taken. So I ask for change to be made and for laws to be developed for the safety of Minnesota. Thank you for making my voice heard. Thank you so much, Frankie, for sharing your thoughts and your feelings about that. We know that um, guns are the leading cause of death in children amongst anything else. And um, it is one of those things that we all think about, deal with, and, and you know, do our best to start to address those issues. So thank you very, very much for sharing that with us. Yes. All right, um, Cassandra, would you like to give us your message? Okay. Would you please state your full name for the record and then begin? My name is Cassandra Evelyn Mir Travel Calvin. I'm in sixth grade and I go to Sunrise Park Middle School. For how school's going, I think it's going good. When I go to school, I know that I'm going to do well in each class and I'm going to be engaged and I'm going to learn things. So for that, I think it's going really well. Any changes I've noticed? I haven't noticed any changes much except for the new school lunch program, that it's all free, and I think that's really important to schools. And the grading system, I don't know a lot about it since I just started sixth grade, but I did notice that teachers were saying that before they did percentages, but now it's the letters grades, no pluses or minuses or Fs, so I kind of think that's for the better. And something I'd like to tell the legislator, I think that funding creative activities in schools is really important because things like sports or plays or musicals, especially musicals for me, I think it's really important for learning how to multitask, how to improvise, how to socialize with other people, and learning how to be confident on stage and speaking in public. So school activities are really important to school every day for students, and funding them is the best way to make sure that they're all they should be and more. Thank all three of you for your well thought out and well verbalized um, thoughts and ideas and suggestions. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming in this morning. All right, next we have um, Reagan Yassin, uh, Rama Mohammed, and Aubrey Eichhardt. And you may state your name and begin. Hello, my name is Rayan Yassin. I'm an eighth grader from St. Anthony Middle School and I'm here today to talk about why we need more individualized learning. Did you know that one, more than 1.2 million kids drop out of high school yearly and only 40%, 46% of college students feel ready for the workforce? 
These alarming statistics show that we are doing something wrong with our American school system, and things need to change. Us students are the future of this country, a future that needs to be taught well so we can be some, become something great. We all have a future, whether we are teachers, mathematicians, historians, archaeologists, architects, or entre entrepreneurs. The American education is a one-size-fits-all kind of system, but every kid has a different mind, they're unique, and they all learn differently. So we, I think that we need more individualized learning so we have a choice in what we learn and how we learn, because learning something you want is more efficient than learning something that kind of puts you to sleep. So I ask you here today, why don't kids get a choice in their learning and their future? Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, and I'm not sure if um, Rama or Aubrey are here. Audrey, no? Okay. We will circle back if they come in. Let's go back to the um, uh, Brandt, Bueno, Fajardo, Karina Kaplan, and Christian Barrero Carrera. Are you here? All right. If you would join us and state your name for the record, and you can begin right away. And then um, after they're done, uh, if, is Nora uh, Pippenberg here? How about Kenna Noughton? Okay. Noor Blanche? Is Noor here? Uh, Peter Zapia. Okay. All right. You may state your name and begin. <clears throat> Hello, Madam Chair, esteemed committee members. I am Brant Bueno Fajardo, 18 years old, senior at Columbia Heights High School, and hopefully a prospective student at Princeton University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand my time here may be brief, but I want to express my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to address all of you. My experience at Columbia Heights High School has been nothing short of joy and fulfillment. I take great pride in the fact that our school holds an 80% minority student population. When I walk the halls of my school, I'm constantly reminded how many bright minds and ideas are culminating in our classrooms due to our diversity. That being said, Although we embrace our differences, I cannot help but acknowledge an issue that plagues many of my classmates and myself. The lack of adequate support within our education environment due to the insufficient funding. Over the years, our school has seen a significant influx of students from international backgrounds, particularly Spanish-speaking countries, whom we have struggled to properly support. The underlying issue lies in the cross subsidization of funds for English classes and special education. We have nearly diverted $4 million from our general budget to cover special education expenses that were originally earmarked to be covered by the state. This has left our resources depleted and our English language learner students and mainstream classrooms underserved. It is clear to me that there are confounding factors at play that must be carefully considered when new legislative bills are created for our educational system. I implore this committee to consider adjusting the formula grants to account for inflation. Without this adjustment, the pursuit of fairness and equity in educational funding will remain an unfunded mandate. We owe it to our students, teachers, and future generations, regardless of their backgrounds, to provide them with the resources and support they need to thrive and succeed. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you um, so much, uh, Brant, for your words. Best wishes on your endeavor to Princeton. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, especially to the community of Columbia Heights that have welcomed and are doing their best to support those students that are, that are joining our community that have those English learner needs and, and SPED needs. So thank you very much. Uh, Karina? Hi, I'm Karina Kaplan. I'm a senior at Columbia Heights High School, and I'm planning to attend the University of Manitoba in this fall. Today, I'm here to ask about the large disparity between lower-funded schools and higher-funded schools who have higher property value, and why, do, why is there such a disparity between the graduation rates and the standardized testings 
scores of the the two, dif two different groups of people. Mm -hmm. That's your message. Yeah. Great. Those are two really important parts of the work that we're doing here and hope to address that as well. And best wishes to you up in Canada. All right. Next we have Christian. Hi. My name is Christian Barrera. And uh, an issue that I've like... An issue that I've like seen around my school is right underfunding, but specifically underfunding with extracurricular activities and how um, a result of underfunding, I've seen lots of sports equipment and equipment needed for you know theater and such to be not in ideal standards. Uh, I've also seen, or there's also a situation in my school where one of uh, both of my um, my music teachers for choir and band have been shared between the high school and the elementary which which is you know an odd thing considering that it shouldn't be that way this should be where both schools can have their own separate uh, music teachers that could you know teach everybody um, music and everything like that um, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks again for joining us here. Um, my uh, assistant here just reminded me that we invested $2.5 billion in special education last year and $110 million um, in our English learning program. I know that sounds like a lot. We know that it's a drop in the bucket and it really is on our top priority to ensure down the road that, that we are continuing to invest in those areas. So thank you very much for voicing the needs for the students that are yet to come into your community. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Uh, is Nora Pippenberg here? Nope. How about Kenna Naughton? Okay, Kenna, come on up. Uh, Nora Blanche? Piper Zapia? Uh, Yahara Barreto Perez. All right, come on in. And you may be. Oh, yes, yep. Yep, please do. Yes. Um, why don't you state your name for the record and you may join uh, the conversation? Hello, um, I am Kenna Naughton and I'm a senior at Apple Valley High School. And as I get ready to go off college in this fall, I would like to address some of the issues at my school in order to make a change for the students after me. I'm also part of my school's speech and debate program, band, and the president of our school's Teen Action Club. Apple Valley has one of the best speech programs in the country and an excellent band program in our state, but our school doesn't recognize that. Each year, our band will see other schools in our district go off on activities and yearly band trips, but our band hasn't received the funding necessary to give our students that opportunity. Most of the time that we know is our parents are the ones that are funding our band opportunity and even the teachers, and I know that's the same for the other arts and activities at our school as well. I would also like to point out the lack of accurate health education at my school. I feel the people teaching our health education are educated in the field. Our gym our gym teachers are the ones who are teaching these classes and they aren't educated properly to be able to answer the questions that many people, and especially young women, have about their bodies. We are not taught about what really goes into our bodies and how that is fields would make a lot of questionable decisions and questionable activities that we know about our bodies. We need act accurate health education in our school to make sure that we have all the information needed to make accurate decisions on our bodies and we are not given that. I would also like to point out that our school has trouble with helping guide these questions going forward, and we need to have health educators that know how to do that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing that information. That's really important for us to know. I know we are work going to be working on health standards coming up, uh, and so uh, your voice is really, really important. Thank you. All right, if the next two of you would like to introduce yourselves, and then you may begin. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Yahira Barreto Paredes, and I am a junior at Fridley High School. Um, I honestly don't have many complaints about my school. They have done an amazing job at supporting and providing <laughs> opportunities for me. But within the process of this, I have noticed a problem, which, of course, is funding. Um, 
This year, I took on two leadership roles within some of the school clubs at my school. And again, one of the issues that I've run into as club president of two clubs uh, was funding and ensuring that my club members have the opportunities and have the access to go to conferences um, and create you know, programs and so, so called on stuff like that. Um, with my school being at almost 80% of low income fam of low income members, um, it has been pretty hard for our clubs to you know have the funding. We have reached out to other organizations as our school, as I said, has hard up hard time. And you know it's not really that fun reaching out to other organizations and asking them for money because then sometimes they have something to say about what we do. Um, yeah, that's. Pretty much my big message would be our funding. Thank you for sharing that with us. And next. Um, hi, my name is Imani Blanks. Um, I am a junior at Fridley High School. Um, I'm a full diploma candidate and also a Northwestern Suburban like um, school district. So I get bused from Brooklyn Park to Fridley High School. Um, Honestly, I would like to just talk about Fridley and the role that they've played in really supporting our students and the different like activities and programs that are available at our school, including the AVID program and Minnesota Honor Society. Um, one of the problems I would like to address is funding in our school, especially with our different activities and athletics. Um, I am a captain on our Fridley dance team, and this year we ran into a problem with not being able to buy new costumes, so we've had to um, rent from other schools and also reuse old costumes. Um, one of the things at Fridley High School that we offer is business and management, environmental science, woodworking, photography, and music production. And um, in those different programs, there's not a lot of money to go around. So we're all kind of challenged in finding ways to fundraise and um, get money for our activities. Thank you also for sharing that with us. We know how important it is those extracurricular activities are to students and to creating the community that you that you live in and that you go to school in. So thank you for sharing those those um, ideas and your thoughts. We're going to switch over to online uh, for a minute um, to Deborah Adewami and um, Rodney Buchanan, and then. Next up will be um, Kyra Kerrigan and Grace McDonald. And then if Samuel <coughs> Ola, pardon me for not knowing this, Ola Tunji, are any of you here? Okay, why don't you come up and get yourself seated? And then we will get our online students set up as well. Am I ready to go or? Yep, well, if you would state your name and um, your school and then you may begin. Thank you. My name is Deborah Adelmi and I am from Irondale High School. I am a junior this year in Irondale and I am the president of the Black Student Union and also I am a part of the speech team here at Irondale and I'm also part of the National Honor Society. I think so far the school year has been great. Uh, junior year has allowed me to I guess, immerse myself in different activities that I never thought I would be able to do. And just the Iron community in general has been so friendly and just very, I would say, welcoming in the sense of activities and just being who you want to be while pursuing what you want to pursue. So that's been very great. A couple issues that I would like to address Iron wise I think the biggest thing is our teacher to student class sizes. I think it's very hard for teachers to relate to students on a personal level and um, communicate learning when class sizes are like really big. So having like 35 students in a class and having one teacher, it gets really, really difficult for students, for teachers to get to each student, but at the same time for students to ask questions and feel like they're getting the learning that they need. And I think that's an issue that we need to address because that really weighs back on learning and it really causes students to feel, I guess, a sense of disconnection from their teachers and sometimes their peers. Because I think people that have a higher level of education tend to do better in those class settings. So not everyone's getting, I guess, that fair advantage. And another thing I have noticed is code of conduct for athletes. 
I think it's very important that we hold our athletes to a standard that we hold, I guess, other students. And a lot of athletes get away with things that, you know, just aren't beneficial. And I think it's really important that we look into that. But again, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really glad I got to speak here today. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, next, we have um, Ronnery. Hello, I am Ronnery Buchan. I am a junior here at Iron Hill High School. Um, I'm heavily involved here. I am a captain of the speech team, of the debate team. I'm involved in math team, earth club, and our chamber orchestra. And within Irondale, a struggle that I've seen is really looking at our environmental impact. Um, in lunch, we use single-use lunch trays and utensils. And although this is an effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, other schools have successfully transitioned into using um, um, reusable trays and silverware that, that can be washed. A change that I would like to see, not only in Irondale, but across all schools in Minnesota, is for schools to really watch their environmental impact, whether it's transitioning to reusable lunch products or creating a community garden or creating a compost bin. It is so important that we begin to look at what we can do for our environment. And this isn't just a call for schools to focus on our, on our environmental impact, but for everyone in Minnesota to do what they can to ensure a healthy planet for all. Thanks, that's a wonderful message to leave us with. Thank you for zooming in and, and sharing your, your interests and your uh, messages with us, thank you. Thank All you right. for this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, and next, if you uh, would like to state your names and then begin your, your testimony. Hi, I'm Kiara Kerrigan. And I'm Grace McDonald. We're both students at Roseville Area High School and we're here today to talk about the importance of Green Step Schools. Green Step Schools is based on the successful Green Step Cities program. White Bear Lake, Roseville, and Falcon Heights are all examples of where Green Step Cities is in place. Green Step Cities is focused on smaller cities unlike Minneapolis and St. Paul, but Green Step Schools is open to all interested districts or schools in Minnesota. The Green Step School program offers a guided structure to create a healthier learning environment. The three main goals are improving climate education, improving staff and student health, and reducing the overall environmental impact of the school. Well, what would this mean for a school? For example, a Green Step school may have efficient lighting, greenery throughout the grounds, solar panels on the roof, and electric buses driving students to school. Green Step Schools is the best practice and recognition program. This program is accessible because it's free to join, so all students in Minnesota are able to benefit from it. A school or school district can join it by one, creating a Green Step resolution that's signed by the school board. Two, creating a green team made up of students, staff, parents, and community members, and three, completing a project story that shows what they've already done to make their school more efficient, no matter how small. Once a school is in the program, they need to complete best practice actions to move up levels. An example of a best practice action is clean energy. Clean energy would be a school using renewable energy as opposed to fossil fuels. There are many other examples of best practice actions that can be completed to move up levels. Our club at Roseville Area High School was the first Green Step Club. We are now on the way to becoming the first Green Step School as well. We have created a green team and have signed a resolution, and we are just working on completing the project story. As a green team, we are working with the district as an advisory committee to create a climate-friendly environment for all. In last year's session, the bill SF2350 was introduced, so you may be familiar with what we have said. We know schools becoming more environmentally friendly is a large financial burden, but it's very important for students' futures. Students spend at least six, years a day, six hours a day for nine months a year for 13 years of their lives in school buildings. Having a sustainable building not only teaches, improves their health, but also teaches them to work towards making change and the importance of an environmentally friendly future. Since Green Step Schools as an organization does not provide funding, we are asking you to fund clean energy programs in Minnesota, not only for students like us, but for the futures of your children and for all those to come. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for a well-coordinated uh, message. And uh, just so um, you know, I'm the author of, of the, Green, um, the Green Steps bill. And so uh, I will continue to uh, work and pursue this because I, I do recognize how important it is that we all, in all the different areas, are working hard to make sure that our environment is uh, safe, it's clean, and it's, it's well preserved for, as we say, the next seven generations. So thank you very much for joining us here this morning. Thank you for having us. You bet. Our Robbinsdale students here. And I don't see them online. How about Amy Bebas? 
Are you here? Okay. Amy, why don't you join us? And Sylvia O'Donnell, are you here? And then we will go through the list and see who we've missed. If you would state your name for the record, and then you may begin. Hi, I'm Sylvia O'Donnell. I'm a seventh grader at SAMS. And today I would like to talk about funding for a new band room. Our band room is incredibly small, and I play flute, so I know that personally. And we've been talking about it for a long time, but we haven't been able to get the funding for it. And I think that it's really important for that so that we can be better and do more stuff with band. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Amy Bibas. I go to St. Anthony Middle School. Um, I'm a seventh grader. And I like to talk about um, how our middle school does not have a foreign language learning program. Um, I find it really important for middle schoolers to learn other languages besides their native one. Um, it, our, I know our high school does teach Spanish, I think, and I just think it'd be um, easier for students to learn at a younger age, so starting in sixth grade. Um, it's really important for students to know other languages besides their native tongue because they would become multicultured and it'd prepare them for traveling in the future. Um, that's all, thank you. Thank you both um, so much for joining us here and I, I agree with you. Um, learning languages, foreign language, languages that are, are different from our native tongue is really, really important for many reasons. I think we have gone through our list. Are there any students out in the audience that we missed or would like to come up and, oh, come on up. So state your name and your school and you may begin. Hi, I'm Peter Zappi. I'm a senior at Monsview High School. And I would like to bring up the funding for multilingual teachers in the schools. I took a Spanish for Heritage Speakers class my first two years of high school, and I was surrounded by plenty of kids who had just immigrated to the U.S. and could not speak English. They tended to struggle a lot more than our other peers because they could not communicate with their teachers, and they did not have the resources to find teachers that could speak their languages and help them. So I ended up talking with them, and it showed the need that we have to get this funding for multilingual teachers. Thank you for sharing that and, and advocating for, for other students as well. And? Hi, my name is Noor Belshi, and I'm, I'm also a senior from Mounds High School. And I wanted to specifically talk about special education. So I know that funding for special education is federal, but the state should think about subsidizing special education and bridging any gaps. So this year we've offered a cre credit recovery course where it really benefits students and helps students that have failed due to COVID and other reasons get their credits back and kind of put them on a good path. And I've noticed that since COVID, a lot of my classmates have taken this class and it's the first year that it's been offered at our school in person and it's really benefited them and I know that next year um, the class will not be offered and I think that would really impact how students are able to thrive in their education due to those like um, due to those difficulties and honestly like bridges that they have and then another thing that I wanted to talk about was class sizes. So this year is one of my first years that I've had smaller class sizes around under 30, a lot of my class has is honestly are under 25, and it's the first year that I've ever been able to build really good relationships with my teachers, and you can just tell based off of their energy and how the classes ran that the class sizes, um, like you're able to build a relationship, and it honestly benefits all of the students in the class and helps with attendance and honestly everything in general, so that's it. Thank you very much. We have a request for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, I know we're not really doing questions, but my daughter uh, is also a senior at Moundsview High School, so go Mustangs. Um, was just wondering what class you just mentioned that you said was going to be going away because of funding that, that the, was beneficial and is now going away? The credit recovery class. Credit recovery, okay. So 
Yeah, so that, I know that it was the first year that it was offered in person at our school, and it was taught by one of my teachers that I've had, and I've heard really good things about it. Um, I just know that from talking with the teacher and Mr. Reitz, the principal, that it's going away next year, and I think that would really, really make a big impact on students. Thank you. Tell uh, Maya I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, are there any other students out in the audience that would like to speak? Are there any questions from our members for any of the students that are still here? All right. And we don't have any more students online, right? Are we expecting any more? Who's that? Okay, any of our Robinsdale students out there? No. Okay, well, um, comments or, or um, thoughts from any of our members? Senator Wesslin. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I just want to say thank you uh, to all the students here and those who may still be online. Uh, as with last year, I think this is probably going to be my favorite hearing that we will have. It's been wonderful um, to have students come so well prepared to share their thoughts and, and ideas with us, and um, thank you for participating in government today. And uh, again, I hope you have a great time. I have a student who's shadowing me today. I encourage all of you to reach out to your own legislators about maybe spending a day and see what it's like to be here uh, going through committees and meetings. But um, thank you, Madam Chair, for having this opportunity as well um, to hear from our students directly. And again, this is by far my favorite committee meeting. Thank you, Senator. Senator Rarick. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you to all the, the students uh, who came today. Um, I didn't get the chance to talk to all of you, but uh, you did a fabulous job. I know sometimes it can be tough uh, getting in front of a group of people and speaking, um, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So, um, you know, Madam Chair, I'd just like to, you know, I think a lot of the things that I took away from what the students said are things that we've, discussions that we've been having here at the legislature as well, and but some discussions discussions that we have to continue and, you know, maybe step back a moment with some of the things that we do here and consider those long-term ramifications. I think um, one of the things that I've been uh, talking a lot about and wanting to dig into um, and talk about, and I think a number of the programs that we heard our students talking about that they were so thankful for, um, our schools really have to try hard to make those programs available because of all the requirements that we put in place for graduation, that a lot of them are geared towards that four-year uh, college program that not all of our students are looking for. And so we need to maybe create these dual pathways towards graduation that a student that who wants to go into construction or who wants to go into nursing um, can take to help them get down that pathway uh, and get those experiences. And I, I really appreciated the, the student who talked about their family was really into nursing and when they were able to take that class and realize this isn't for me. And some of those opportunities, if we can get that for our students, I think would be so beneficial, but we create these tracks that it becomes very difficult for our students to get some of those experiences. So I'm hoping that's something we can look at. And again, um, just some of the requirements that we put in place sometimes limit the school's ability and the school board's ability to use funding the way they maybe could use it in their area that would be more beneficial for their students. So those are things that I think um, we have to have some of those tough discussions here to say, you know, there, I get it, there are many times we can identify something that we think is very important, but we have to sometimes step back and say, let's not mandate it, let's, you know, maybe we can make suggestions, but let's let school boards and locals make some of those decisions to give them that flexibility to offer some of these opportunities that we heard from students that they so appreciate. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Senator Rarick. I, I hear those things loud and clear. And as we've said, we are working hard to um, 
either correct or fill or re-establish programming and funding as best we can after years and years of, of starving the educational system. And, and we'll continue to do that work, listening both to you um, and the other members and our, our families and our students. Um, Senator Swadzinski, you wanted to make a com uh, comment. Yeah, just I just want to thank all the students and the parents that got them here and uh, for um, taking time out of your busy lives. It's not easy to upset the apple cart, so to speak, and come down here and share your opinions on whatever you want to, what you think is important. My take, well, first of all, I'm not even sure who said it, but the uh, uh, student that called us all esteemed members, um, I don't think you know us very well. Um, <laughs> So, and then the other thing, um, my two takeaways today from listening to the students, um, a lot of you had individual concerns. Um, I didn't hear anything about cell phones today, but the, per the student that talked about gun violence, um, it's always disturbing to me greatly. And the, those statistics of, um, that um, that student gave are always um, heart-wrenching to hear. But my two takeaways is the students seem to want more hands-on experiences, and um, and we hear you. And the other thing that um, students talked a lot about was the, the the importance of individualized learning. And what I think um, the students said, what I think is important to my education, and and we need to hear you as well. And and I'm old school. I believe that you know that we the, the school experience should be. Um, preparing students to be good citizens and, and humanities and, um, and, and, um, and yet when I hear students say that's not necessarily what I need in, in my educational career, it weighs heavily on my conscience. And so um, I just want to thank all the students and thank um, um, Senator Kunish for making this day happen because as um, um, Senator Westland said it is among the highlights of the year for all of us um, hearing from the youth. So we are the education committee, so we should hear from you. Thank you, Senator Swadzinski. Next, uh, Senator Umu Verbaden. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just want to echo the same thoughts. I love student day. I love any opportunity to hear directly from students. I serve on the higher education committee as well. And um, it's one of the best parts of this job is just being able to work directly with students, especially when we get those opportunities to work on legislation together. Um, and I was sitting here typing notes, uh, take, paying attention to you all, and I wanted to make sure I captured what a lot of our students were saying and just want to share some highlights for me. Um, talking about students with IEPs needing to feel safe, um, the importance of gay straight alliance clubs and just creating really um, safe environments for our, um, our queer students. I know how important that is as one of the members of the queer caucus here um, in the Minnesota Senate. Our students talked about needing funding and keeping uh, their, their classroom sizes smaller so they could really get to know their teachers. Um, I wrote down the quote, a lot of people see the test scores, but not the learning. So really having that growth mindset. Uh, I thought it was so cool, the student who talked about getting the OSHA certification um, in high school and love career technical education. It's so important for us to get our, our students um, prepared to take on those jobs and, and, and see a career in their future. Um, concerns about gun violence are just heartbreaking and that's work we need to continue to do here at the Senate. Um, and then, of course, thank you so much to my Roseville students. Again, Roseville leading the way on Green Step Schools. Um, and thanks for authoring that legislation, um, Senator Kunish. So a lot of highlights. Um, I just want to encourage our students to continue to engage with us as legislators. We love hearing from you. Please set up meetings with us um, and tell us about your ideas because we can work on legislation together and we really, really love doing that. And I also just want to say if students are still around, maybe at the end of committee, if we could all get together and take a photo, I think that would be really fun. Wonderful. <clears throat> that sounds good. Um, it, uh, Senator Gustafson, if you could just hold a second. We have the Robbinsdale Middle School team here, and we'd love to hear from all of you as well. So if you would turn on your, your microphone, um, and students, if you would introduce yourself and send us your message. 
I will just introduce my, let them introduce themselves. I just wanted to say hello to Senator Kunish. Thank you again for this opportunity. This is, my name is Kathy Seip, and we are broadcasting live from your former media center. Um, three sixth graders, and we will start with. Hi, I am Legman from the Robinson Middle School. Nice to meet you, and a good opportunity to like talk about the school. So I'm trying to say that we have like, I have not like been seeing about like the field trips because my cousin who came here last time didn't say like guys in have school to do like to the COVID-19. So I'm trying to like say that because students, I just want to know that students can also like, there are like places, different places for learning than only in the school. So I'm trying to say like, you can go outside, find places like zoos, learn about things that are not like always surrounded by the school. I just like something I can do. So I'm just trying to say that it's a lot like we can like start like hosting few trips it's not like only like classes specific, specific like specific classes to should do it more like different classes no matter like how much no matter like a group because the only people I'm going to go on few trips are like sport for like um the game they're playing like basketball but also one like student like don't play sport or any groups I can also enjoy themselves like going outside and find different places for learning thank you thank you so much for joining us and next we have Samuel. Hello, Samuel. Um, Would you state your full name for the uh, record and you may begin. Samuel Olatunji, and thank you for having me here in this meeting. What I'd like to say is that if like we can have teachers be more supported in things they need, they will be more delighted and more like they'll want to help us students more with like materials and everything else we need. And if they, and also janitors, if um, they get supported as well, much more, we'll have a much cleaner and safer environment to like drink water from or like go to the bathroom safer. And if we can have more outdoor activities, it would also be nice because um, I, staying inside the whole time especially like in middle school as i just came from elementary school i used to go out outside and have recess a lot so no recess is kind of hard for me so if we can have more outdoor activities it would be nice thank you thanks so much i know that's a hard transition from um being at that elementary level and getting an opportunity to get outside, get some fresh air, move your body to middle school where that doesn't happen. And so that is, um, that's, a, that's a really interesting point that you just shared with us. Thanks for sharing that. And next we have... Zakaya Tanel. Zakaya Tanel. Um, for today, I feel like for my school, it's a pretty good school, just like maybe we could have like more outside time because like i feel like not like i'm trapped inside school but like sometimes i feel like i want fresh air or maybe like for lunch i would have better water because sometimes the water just doesn't make me feel like hydrated and whatnot and maybe more custodians for school so then we have a cleaner and better school maybe possibly vending machines for like kids who just want snacks instead of like actual lunch or whatnot or for field trips maybe or like just a chance to be able to go outside or a chance to get better water so then we don't have to end up going home hungry still thank you very much for having me here thank you all for joining us um from my former digs and um, uh, good to see you there and say hello to Miss Beatty for me. All right, are there any other students that need to share anything with us that have arrived perhaps? No? All right, um, Senator Gustafson, you wanted to say something. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, thank you for doing Student Day again. I think it is really nice to start our session hearing from students. Um, and I think it's important that we hear what's going on in schools, what they're noticing. Of course, I'm gonna mention the fact that several students brought up universal school meals, which was my bill. And I really, obviously for the value of it, 
Um, school meals means that students have what they need to succeed in school. Um, it was less than 1% of our education budget. It puts money back in the pockets of our families. And also what I love about it too is as we're listening to people talk about what impact they have on these bills that we passed and these policies that went in place, school meals was one of those that people felt instantly. They could, they could see the policy passed and then see a direct positive influence in their lives. And when I hear the students talking about more funding, you can tell that sometimes, you know, maybe on us, we need to do a better job of saying, like, this is the money that was passed, and here's what it went for, and then hold schools, you know, work with them in partnership to make sure that the students and the uh, teachers and the parents feel that, feel the impact of what we passed. And I just want to quickly close by saying, thank you to the students who are advocating for their teachers to have higher pay. Like, I don't know who their principals are, but they need A's, straight A's. Um, <laughs> but I do think that that is something that we don't uh, highlight enough because we, we, you know, we're student-centered as we should be. But I will just always echo the fact that teacher support is student support. Taking care of our teachers does help our students. And when we realize that it is important for us to invest in both a livable wage for teachers and a fair pension, then we start to see that teachers will... Maybe people will want to become teachers again is the, is the goal, right? And we can make sure that we have um, the right people in our schools. Um, so as a teacher for 12 years in public schools, I know how hard it is. I was super jealous of the people that said they had a 30 to 1 ratio. Mine was something like 40, 41 to 1 at some times. Um, and it was really, really tough. So my heart is always with the teachers and the students in those classrooms. So thanks again to everybody who joined us. Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, this has been just, um, you know, as, as I say, my favorite day as well. We heard a lot of different topics coming in from our students advocating for the teachers, um, the support folks like our custodians and those folks that keep our schools running when we talk about um, being able to pay our teachers a livable wage, we also have to keep in mind and extend that to those, to our paras, to our custodians, to um, the bus drivers, to all of those folks, our, our kitchen folks that keep our schools running and uh, appreciate the students that recognize that and continue to advocate for that. Uh, it's interesting the different themes that are coming up around uh, making sure that we have um, uh, an environment that we can all thrive in, not just now, but into the future, uh, recognizing that we still have a lot of work to do to, to address those cross-subsidies, especially in special education, uh, English learning education, and of course transportation is, is always going to be a tough one for many of our schools that have miles and miles of uh, transportation for, to get their students to and fro from school. We appreciate the voices that are asking for um, a variety and flexibility within their schools. Um, it is really tough to hear about some of the schools that are able to provide incredible uh, opportunities, learning opportunities and flexibility while others school districts aren't able to do that for um, you know, a variety of reasons. And so these are the things that we will always take into consideration, continue to do this work to address the needs, um, get those basic needs for our schools in there, and then um, see what we can do to support uh, the, the programming that is going on. I really feel bad for those schools that don't get to go on field trips because as a teacher myself, I always looked forward to those field trips as well. I, I learned a lot. Um, my students got out of the building and got to places that they maybe never would have been able to go. Uh, we saw a wide variety of kids that are thriving that are, have uh, uh, plans for the future, that are looking to the future, that are driving their future. These students are our future, 
you know, as we get older, these are the kids that are going to take over and and be the teachers, the um, legislators, the the folks in our community. And it is, as far as I'm concerned, worth the investment and worth worth the fight of of getting them the the programming and the education that they need. And so um, with that, if nobody else has anything else to say, um, we're going to get out of here a little bit earlier than we had anticipated. I want to thank, again, the students that came either online or uh, came here in person to testify and share their thoughts. I want to thank the parents that brought their students or um, set it up for their students to be so successful. Um, I want to thank um, the teachers that prepared their students, that made space in their, their, their library or their classroom for those students to, to share their message. Uh, and, and this is something that I think we will continue uh, to do as we go forward and build the kind of educational system that I think we all are very going, to, going to be very proud of. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, we will not be meeting tomorrow and next week. We will not be meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we will be meeting on Thursday. And so those of you, those students that are still here, if you would like to join us for a group picture after we're done here, we would love to have you come up. And those that were, um, that, um, uh, um, testified online. Uh, again, we thank you very much for making that happen. And so with that, we are adjourned.